Hey guys, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks. And this time I'm playing in the tier 10 Japanese medium tank, the SDB-1, along with my big brother, Z Zayon. So lots of people always ask him where does his name come from. Well, the eagle-eyed of you, or maybe some of the older of you, will remember that it was one of the starting systems, I believe, in Elite 64. So, I'm playing with Z again. He managed to come back. We've been having a good time getting back into World of Tanks and of course whenever I play with my big brother teamwork always seems to happen and this game is absolutely no exception. So before we get stuck into the teamwork aspect of this video let's also focus on the STB-1. Lots of people always ask me is it the best tier 10 medium tank and yeah it has got 10 degrees of gun depression. It's pretty darn fast having a top speed limit of about 50 kilometers now with a decent engine power and it has AAA DPM firing seven and a half rounds a minute. The highest rate of fire of any 105 millimeter gun that even outperforms the buffed M48 A1 pattern. But the STB-1 does have some issues. Those issues are predominantly the fact that it has one of the long, largest aim times of any of the tier 10 medium tanks, along with the Object 430. And its gun dispersion, its bloom, the, the reticle getting bigger, is rather nasty as well. And so that means that it can be quite tricky for the STB-1 to be able to use its full rate of fire at mid to long ranges. So I always like to get up close and personal and work these kind of short, very short ridgeline engagements with my opponents and this is where I feel like the STB-1 is pretty much the best tier 10 medium tank in these kind of specific positions. So we get lucky, we take out a Panther 88 and then we shut down a foolish tier 10 American artillery, the T-92, who decided to come way up on this ridgeline. I guess he wanted to try and land in some AP rounds into the sides of his opponents. So we put a round into the WZ-120, we come round and just check out this rate of fire, finish him off, Flank the M46, try and get him to turn his turret to my friends, but he has no interest, he ignores me, and we shut him down. Well, that was four of the quickest kills you'll ever get, hey, in World of Tanks. What a start to this round. But, as Westfield always seems to develop, when you have strong medium tanks on your team and you win the south, then you get this very awkward situation where the enemy generally wins the north. Now... More often than not, a lot of players will just rush down into the cap circle here and then quite often these tanks will manage to get along the ridge line or up into positions like this and it's such an easy interrupt on this cap circle, it's completely open. Really capping on Westfield is a very, very, very tricky thing to do. Luckily that Yag Tiger just misses us, but unfortunately we also bounce off him. And so here we go, here is me and Z and his T-62A. Now obviously the differences between these two tanks are, are dramatic. The T-62A having one of the best turrets in the game, but he's only got five degrees of gun depression. He can depress his gun basically half of what I can with my 10 degrees. And so that means that generally I have to try and be on the inside of the corner um, with maybe my tracks slightly up the slope. And then we need to have Z on the right hand side of me. But that is a tank that you don't want to face in your tier 10 medium tanks. That's the tier 10 American non-turreted tank destroyer, the T-110E3. Probably, the, in my opinion at least, the most heavily armoured frontal tank in the game. With also, I think, 8 degrees of gun depression. That thing is so flexible in those kind of positions. So I'm thinking, hell, let's get out of there and try and deal with the flock of tanks that are making their way here. So let's just take a look at the situation. Oh god, the first shell goes right into my turret. But a quick dab of 4-4, we've managed to get our turret into effect. Oh, Z, that's not teamwork. Z puts a heat round up my backside. That's not very nice. Okay. Don't worry about that one, let's just keep working it. And fair enough, the T-125 might be one of the most scary heavy tanks, at least in the current match of the game. But when you're just consistently tracking it like this, and you've got two tier 10 medium tanks doing some work on it, its health does not last very long. Look how quickly the SDB-1 was able to rip apart the T-125 there, doing nearly 2,000 damage to him. And with Z's help, we managed to get rid of our first opponent. And here comes the T-123. And now this is the lovely part. Wait for the track. He repairs instant track. Beautiful shot there by Z, taking his tracks off on the move. And then I had the easy job retracking probably one of the most dangerous tank destroyers in the game. And we're just going to hold him there while we now kill an IS-7 and a Yag Tiger, And we're taking it in turns to basically keep the T-110E3 tracked here. And because he doesn't have a turret, that means that we've effectively completely taken him out the game and we can go to town on the other vehicles. So I'm just holding the T-110E3 in place. Z took a very nasty shot to the turret there, which jammed his turret. 
We were communicating on TeamSpeak at the time, and I say, all right, Z, we'll, I'll hold him here while you get your turret back in. His turret is now fixed. He tracks the T-123. I finish off the IS-7. I get a good shot into the Yag Tiger. Z finishes off the Yag Tiger, and I track the T-123 again. And this is where, frankly, medium tanks that are coordinating are just vastly better than heavy tanks and tank destroyers that are obviously not in platoons and working together. And, oh, I, I'm even adding insult to injury and loading high explosive rounds here. 519? Wow, talk about taking your 3,000 DPM and just mag like, multiplying it here. 491 damage and a fire. That's 1,081 damage with two shots. And we finish off the T-123. Look at this absolute graveyard. Now the uh, our team just go back and kill the Object 704. But I have to admit... That is a pretty cool screenshot for some teamwork there. Hey, guys. Now, of course, this kind of synergy is not something that happens overnight. This is the fact that me and Z have been playing games together for years, working together to get through tricky situations that otherwise would be completely impossible. And it's plays like these that are possible due to our concise and effective communication that really are the most rewarding moments, at least for me, in World of Tanks. And so I thought I'd highlight some of the key aspects of teamwork that I have luckily managed to develop with Z and with Ike, and now I'm slowly developing with Phil and also with John. Firstly, trust. You can't be second guessing your teammates. You have to rely on them to be able to get that final shot on the tank that's managed to flank you or go back and interrupt the cap circle or cap out to enable you to do what else you need to do in the battlefield. Trust in your platoon mates means that you can focus in as a two or a three man unit but also then separate when the situation requires it. Secondly, you're not just thinking about your own hit points, you're thinking about your platoon's hit points. It's all about keeping as many guns in the game as possible. Remember a tank on one hit point is just as dangerous as a tank that's on a thousand hit points. And we're not just talking about the firepower capabilities, it's also the fact that they can distract your opponents and they can dissuade them from playing aggressively. A lot of what we saw in this replay was the fact that the enemies just didn't rush us. If they'd all rushed us together and managed to get our flanks, then they probably would have been completely okay. It was the fact that we had two players here that concerned the enemy and made them hesitate from pushing around the corner, which would have been completely the right thing to do. Thirdly, you need to have clean-cut communication. For me personally, the only way to do that is to get on something like TeamSpeak or Ventrilo or Skype. Now, fair enough, you can use the in-game commands. For example, assist me shooting this target, fall back, halt, you're blocking my fire. And while this can be very useful, it's probably not going to allow you to purvey complex information as quickly as you can by using a microphone and a headset. And if you haven't used voice over IP programs before, I can totally understand why you might be a bit nervous about using them the first time. I remember 10-15 years ago when I really started playing MMOs on the internet that I was a little bit nervous about people hearing my voice but after a while everyone gets over it completely and when you do it becomes a major advantage. And my final tip is to always be thinking about what kind of tanks are going to go together. For example will a three-man platoon of bat chats be able to be flexible enough to win all of the different game types and maps they have to play on? Sure you might get that situation where you guys get to run in and assassinate an E100 ridiculously quickly, but then you're kind of investing a large amount of your team, 20% to be exact, out of the following combat. And so while there are tanks that I think are ridiculously overpowered, one-on-one. -on -one. There are some vehicles such as mediums that really do go hand in hand together with teamwork. Just like with everything, you have to practice, practice, practice and figure out why you didn't get through that situation together. And then eventually you're going to make better decisions and play better together and then you're going to be able to deal with vastly superior numbers on the enemy team. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider giving it a like down below. It really helps the channel out. And I'll also put a link to a Twitch highlight of this game and our live voice communications in the description below. So you can check that out if you're interested to hear how it happened in real time. And if you're looking for more awesome teamwork games, then I've got a playlist with over 16 epic examples that you can check out. And if even that is not enough, then why not swing by my live stream on twitch.tv forward slash quickie baby where I platoon tune every Thursday with some of my awesome buddies. Hopefully I see all of you there tonight and as always thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.